Hello, my name is Warren Young, aka Tangent of TangentSoft.net. This is Tangent Tutorial 2, Basic Soldering Techniques. In the previous tutorial, I showed you all the equipment that you need for soldering. In this tutorial, I'm going to show you how to start putting it to use. Okay, the first thing you have to know is how to take care of your iron tip. Now, as you can see, the tip of this iron is really dull, it's not shiny. What that that is is because it's been heating up and hot metal oxidizes much more quickly than cold metal. So what it's doing is it's just sitting there oxidizing. With that oxide on it, it's not going to conduct heat well. So what you need to do here is you need to tin the tip. And that means taking your solder and running it over the tip like that and just coat all the surfaces. Okay. What you're doing here is you're letting the rosin eat through any oxides and then you're also getting a thin layer of solder on all the surfaces. Then what you do is you take your iron back to your sponge, your wet sponge, and you just wipe it on the sponge until all the solder is, is off. Now, if I just let it sit here for a couple seconds, you may notice that it's starting to get a little bit yellow. That's it oxidizing again. Uh, the hotter the iron, the quicker it's going to oxidize. So you want to not wipe the solder off until you're ready to begin doing the joint. So if you're going to put the iron away for, for a while uh, before you you know do it do the next joint, what I like to do is I like to tin the tip again and then I just put it away and it's ready to go. All I have to do is clean it off when I'm ready to get started soldering again. Alright, I'm going to show you an animation here showing what a good solder joint looks like when it's being created. I'm showing you this animation because it's much closer than I, than I can get with the camera. Alright, so first you need to put the flat part of the iron tip against the component lead and also touching the pad. You, you need to heat them both up. Then you touch the solder wire to the iron tip and that gets flowing. As soon as it starts flowing, you need to move that solder around the joint. A correct joint is shiny, it's conical and might, probably has uh, slightly concave sides. If it looks dull, if it's blobby, if it doesn't cover the entire pad, it's not a good joint. All right, the first thing I'm going to show you is how to solder a standard leaded resistor. I've got it poked through the board already. The only thing you might keep in mind is if there's a label on the resistor, as with the Vishe Dale RN55s, you want to orient it so that, that label is up and readable. Um, with you know most other resistors, it really doesn't matter how you insert it. It doesn't matter which direction you put a resistor either. So I'm going to clean the solder off my tip. And I'm going to put the iron flat against the lead. Just flow some solder onto the joint. I'll go and do the other. Some people will tell you that you should clean the iron tip in between each joint, but if you're going to do two joints really quick back to back like that, I don't really see a need. So you've noticed that I've I'm, I've got the board uh, slightly tilted upward. Uh, it's a rather large board, so I'm not laying it flat on, with my helping hands, otherwise it would tip the helping hands over. Also, I'm uh, you know kinking these these leads back so that the part doesn't fall fall out of the board. And I'm just going to do another one of these joints again just for educational value. So I'm just you know heating both the pad and the lead and then I'm just flowing the solder around the lead. And you just trim off the lead, extra lead length, and that's it. Now I'm going to show you how to solder in a, a basic leaded film cap. Just like resistors, film caps are not polar. It doesn't matter which direction you put them in. There is a label on them, so you might, you might put it in the direction where you can most easily read the label. But other than that, it doesn't much matter. Once you got it in the board, just kink those leads back a little bit so that it doesn't fall out. Now, the cap might tend to want to fall out, so I'm going to show you a little trick here. I'm going to solder just one lead, okay, and then I'm going to, you know, put my finger on the back, and I'm going to reheat this first joint real quick, just long enough to make sure that the cap is, is flat on the board on the back side. 
once that first joint is is holding it down, uh, the other one, you know, it, it's it's going to stay flat on the board. So I'm just going to do the second joint. There we go, and that's it. All right, now things are going to get a little trickier. I'm going to show you a radial leaded capacitor. Now you notice that one of these late leads is shorter than the other, and also on one side here there's a stripe. That stripe marks the negative side and the longer lead is positive. You, it really has to be put in in the correct direction. And then you notice this pad, one of these pads here, is square and that's for the longer lead, you see? If you get it backwards it's likely to blow up, you know, in most circuits when you apply power because uh, you know you normally use electrolytic caps where uh, you know where there's serious amounts of power so if you get it backwards it's going to blow up on you so don't do that same deal the only difference here is the leads are a little thicker so it's going to take me a little longer be patient you know as long as you're getting a joint done in less than about five seconds that's fast enough you're taking a lot longer than that, then you're likely to damage the part. Also, see this big copper plane here? Uh, that's also part of the reason why it's taking longer. So you've got bigger, thicker leads, and we've got a lot of copper to heat up, so it takes a little bit longer. Be patient. Okay, another type of part that where the ends matter is a diode. And you see that one leg has got marked as a stripe near the end. That's the negative lead, and it will go in the in the pad that's not square. The positive lead is usually the square pad on, on, a, on a circuit board. So I'm going to insert that in the board. And just like with the resistor, I'm going to kink back its legs so that it stays put. And once again, these leads are a little thick, so it's going to take a little longer. I'm putting the flatted side of the iron against the lead. And just flowing the solder around the lead. Okay, now we're going to do an even trickier part, and that's one of these sockets. Now you notice up here near the top, there's a little notch. Pin one is in this corner. You know, it's it's up here near this notch. You want to put this socket on the board in the right orientation. Pin one on the board will either be marked with another notch on the silk screen of the board and possibly also with a square pad. So the way you want to get those in the board is you, you tilt the board up so that it's almost tipped over and uh, you know so that the socket just barely stays in. We've got this one in the board already so I'm going to just solder that first pin. Okay. Now it's not going to be, the socket is going to be kind of falling out of the board at this point. So you take your finger on the back side, being careful not to touch pin one because that's going to get real hot real quick. And just reheat that first joint, pushing the socket in. Once that's done, you know, once that joint cools, it's going to hold the rest of the socket steady. So I'm going to clean my iron tip real quick and I'm going to go back over and do these remaining seven joints real quick. Again, since I'm doing them real fast like this, I don't really need to clean the iron tip between joints. If you take longer and the iron tip starts to get some oxides on it, you know, go ahead and clean off the iron bet between joints. Okay, that's it. Basic soldering 101. In the next tutorial, I'm going to show you some more intermediate soldering techniques. Thanks for your attention and goodbye.